Well, you start at three o'clock in the morning, you go to market, you buy all your gear, then when you come home from market, you arrive in Church Street, you have to set the stores out, put the displays up, ready to start work, then you have a cup of tea and you start work, and you're there till five o'clock. This summer, very nice, people are very easy to serve, very friendly. In the winter, very cold, very hard and a long day. Uh, you get up very early to go to market, half past three in the morning. Work till five o'clock, it's a very hard job. Leave my house at two o'clock in the morning, have to go and load up before I come out to work, uh, set up the stall, serve, and then I pack up. event in London. It's called the Great Fire of London. Um, lots of people lost their homes in the old city of London and they needed to find somewhere else to live. So they moved out to what were the country suburbs, which is what this area was like at the time. But when they got here, the roads weren't very good. So it took a long time for them to get back, if they still had businesses in the city, to actually get back there. Um, so they built a new road that was called the New Road uh, to begin with, and now it's Marylebone Road. As soon as that road came along, people could get from the city and out to this area quickly. Lots of people thought it was a good idea, lots of richer people, to move to the countryside. And this man called George Shillabier had a fantastic idea, and he started the first bus service in London that allowed people from here to get into the city very quickly. The thing that really started to change things was when the canal was built here. When the Grand Junction Canal came in the early uh, 19th century, about 1801, it became a means of getting goods into London very easily along the canals. So warehouses and sheds started growing around here, and if you've got warehouses and sheds, you need workers to work there. So more working people came into the area, and the area gradually and slowly began to change. Well, it began with a place called Portman Market, more or less about the same time as that canal, because when you've got the canal in, you can bring things in and out of the city. Um, it, it's good to have a market on the place here because you can sell some of those things that are arriving on the spot. And it was selling things like hay and uh, it was meat and vegetables. Um, and by 1830, 30 years after it had started, it was said to rival Covent Garden Market, which is the famous market um, more in central London. So the new road, which had been a quick route into the London, very soon became very congested. As soon as the Metropolitan Line came, the first tube service in the world allowed once again people to get into the city very quickly and allowed more richer people to build some grander houses out here and move into this area. This is the Old West theatre of the day. And right here, where this is taken down, we've just walked through here to come into the library. Jordan's was, I say, it was a store where they sold furniture, shoes, clothes, bits and pieces, household goods, everything. They sold everything and they was, they was the lifeline of this particular area for years. Sort of as the 19th century went along, it couldn't compete with Common Garden and then by 1907 it disappeared. But what happened when it disappeared in 1907 is that some of the people who used to have stalls in Portman Market decided to set those stalls up in the street along Church Street and that's the beginnings of Church Street Market, so from the early 1900s. Um, well, I, when I was born, my father was already trading here, so I was working on the stall from the time I could walk. We've been here since the day this market opened. When we started, the market used to carry on every day until 9 o'clock at night, and on a Saturday night, the market used to work here until 1 o'clock in the morning because unfortunately in those days all of the men used to drink and when they came out the pubs they did their buying and that was it. Five generations of my family have lived in the same street. That was my granddad's salad stall in Church Street. That's my dad and that's my uncle Bert. I started going out helping my dad when I was six years old. Our family has been working in the markets for 
55 years now and there's about 10 of our family members that have all got different stalls. We've had the stall for 50 years. My nan, my granddad, my mum, my dad and now myself. Uh, I started trading in 1963. Um, I just like the I like the banter, the, the, the customs coming in. I've always been in the retail trade and I just like meeting people. Uh, my father and my grandfather were both market traders. They actually worked in the market, auctioneering, selling tools. And we started to sell old clothes, my wife and I. And then we got fortunate and then we sold old uh, second-hand furniture and then we was lucky enough to be able to produce new furniture which led us on to the position we're in at the moment. Uh, my mother was in this business, uh, well, in this area I should say in Church Street, Malibu, since 1958. She joined Alfie's in 1975 and I joined in 1981. My mum used to have a bookstall down Church Street Market and I used to be down there with her when I was a little girl. And now she used to collect me from school and I used to go and sit on the market stall with her. They used to have a, a little trolley that used to pull the bookstall out with and they called it Joey and I used to ride on it through Church Street with my brother. Because as a working population built, as they built the railways and the canals, more working people in the area, there was always a demand for things like second-hand clothing and other things, second-hand furniture, which you can still see a little bit of that in Church Street today with the antiques markets and things there. We uh, used to have uh, fruit and veg stalls, um, nearly everyone, and we used to have dress stalls. Uh, people used to sell um, blankets, cutlery. The normal kind of foodstuffs was done by lots of us as children. Uh, our parents were always out to work and we would come and they'd leave us little notes before we went off to school and come up to the stalls and get some potatoes, greens or whatever it might be. As locals in the area, they really looked after us. They, they gave us lots of different things, always looked after us as children. Walking past, we'd always get an apple or an orange or something like that. So we had many kind of traders that we knew. And as we grew older, lots of us, uh, not me particularly, but lots of uh, the, the youngsters in the area actually did Saturday jobs for them and worked on the stalls. Well, I actually worked on a market stall selling flowers when I was at school on a Saturday you had a Saturday job to get pocket money. I also worked in a record shop in Church Street on a Saturday. My sister worked on the stocking stall where people used to pick up old stockings and match them and buy them and she bought this little radio and someone bitched it. 1949 or 50 and for the first time ever then some of the stall holders actually put coloured lights on to kind of celebrate the Christmas period. And when we come up then as children that are just getting over the Second World War where it was no lights in the streets or anything like that at all, no food, no fruit, no nothing, we came up here and we, we thought it was probably an Aladdin's cave. After the Second World War um, was when Alfie, Alfie's Antiques Market started. There'd always been second-hand um, salesmen on the street. Uh, the gentleman who owns this place now, is, or was at the beginning, was a gentleman called Alfie Gray. He was a fruit and vegetable seller in uh, Portobello Road. Originally, it was a uh, haberdasherist, which was selling uh, anything from sweets to biscuits and materials to all kinds of things. And now we've become an antique centre. And so they started with 12 dealers and it worked so well, they opened up another 20. And Saturday evening, or Saturday's trading finished, all the old store I just throw the rubbish down. We used to come up, didn't we? Pick all the apples and pears, didn't we? Go home with because they, was, they wouldn't take them back. They'd just leave them, and we always, we always used to come and help ourselves. So I would go down to the market looking for a nice old orange box made of wood that we would find some pram wheels. We'd put those on the, the orange box, and that would be our fun. We would go down the streets on this orange box, steering it round. It was great fun. We used to go around and get all the boxes, and we would take them up, go up around here, chop them all up into little sticks, bundle them up, and we'd sell them a penny a bundle. Just almost outside here, there was Tubby Isaacs. He used to buy live eels. 
in a in a big tray on a stool and had all the eels moving about. And I'd look in these eel stalls uh, and the eels were swimming about like this, all twisting about and in there. And, and I'd be looking at these eels and the lady would come along and say, uh, I'd like an eel please. So he'd get into one of these eels like this and, and he would put it on the block and he'd chop the head off into a box like that. And he'd get his knife and he'd split it open and scrape all the insides into the box. And the eel would still be wiggling about like this. Then, and the mouth will be going in the box. And here we go, chop, 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 chop. Get a newspaper, put the eel into the box, wrap it up, piece of parsley, and put it into the lady's bag. And I could still see the tail flapping as it was in the bag. Along, there was a place called Chocolate Joe's. And the reason it was called Chocolate Joe's, he had big slabs of chocolate yeah. and he'd have a hammer. And he would break up the chocolate as you bought it. I just wanted lots and lots of sweets, so I used to go down there and I used to hit one stall and the man on the stall stood on the steps and used to say one, one sweet would cost you t um, whatever it was, 10p, but then he would add lots more to it and in the end you got a whole wadge of sweets for 10p, it was brilliant. You would start at £10 and then you'd come down, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, and then someone put their hand up. Further up the road was a dairy, and if the dairy was shut, they had a big brass handle on the door, and you pulled the handle down, and you got your milk. You put your penny in You there. put your penny in the slot and got your milk. A guy like him, he'd have all crockery, all on, the, all on the counter. And he used to say, don't worry about a pound, ten bob, you know, five bob. And he'd push the plates on, run and on, be all round, and pile them up, and you were waiting for him to drop them. But he didn't. He was very clever. We used to have a very famous character called Prince Monolulu that used to come down here tipping horses. He was um, African. He made his living by giving tips to people to back on horses. Very colourful man. Used to stand there in the middle of the street and dance and sing and yell, I've got a horse. There was Charlie Huckle. They used to call him Charlie Huckle. He was like a, he was a vagrant, but he used to help on the stalls and his hair was so alive with fleas. And there was one guy, his name was Spider, and he lived, he lived in Church Street, just off of Church Street, and he used to have a dog in a pram and a wind-up gramophone. Um, he did actually like a drink, and he used to push this pram all the way down to the West End to, to earn a few bob with the dog. The dog used to dance about. Yes, we also had Mr Strange, who was at one time supposed to be the world's strongest man. He had a stall down here selling vitamins. What actually brought about a change is that in the 1960s, people coming from Commonwealth countries and from countries that have been associated with Britain from other parts of the world came into this area. When the first coloured people came down this market when I was a small boy, my father used to say to me, look, there's a coloured person over there. And we used to look because We'd never seen them before. Now it's cosmopolitan. Everybody comes down here much better. Uh, both my parents worked in the markets and my brothers, so I worked in the market as well. There's a lot of obviously Muslim communities now, like you know, Moroccan people, and years ago it was just pure English people. Over the last 20 odd years, obviously it's a, it's a Kurdish. Lebanese, Moroccan people, do you know what I mean? Exactly. Hi darling, Hi. you alright? Wanna get on here? No, 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 later, no. later. Later on, so you come yeah. on. So you come on later. Yeah, it is very important to, uh, for, uh, for the people who want to start up their own business to find the, uh, the place where they want to, to make the uh, first step in. I like to be self-employed, to work for myself, not for other people. So I'm happy to do what I'm doing for myself. And I think the changes is that a lot of new market store, store holders from the Middle East and Africa have come in and that's really made it much more colourful and they brought in more types of food and more types of vegetables so we've got much more choice than we had before. And of course down Church Street you've got the, the market cafe and everyone knows everyone and that's where the local gossip, well, that's where they all sit so yeah it's, it's, a, good, it's a good atmosphere yeah. Church Street is just one of those wonderful places where you hear lots of different languages 
and it's always colourful and great place to be. Uh, summer is very vibrant and loud, especially on the Saturday market. And I also like the fish barrel. They clean all the fish for everybody, take the heads off and the innards out, and they're always beautifully clean. Very, very lively, lots of noise, lots of people shouting out about their products, what they're selling, lots of smiling faces. It's a happy place to walk. As long as people want food at reasonable prices and it's good, it will be here. Says Polo the bag and don't dearly dally on the way. This is gin, not water. <laughs> when the car with my own packed in it, I followed on with the old cock in it. I dilly, da dally, dally, and I dilly. I lost my way and don't know where to go. Oh, you can't trust a special <laughs> like the old time copper when you can't find your way home. Get off me, Barra! <laughs> <laughs> Do you think we'll find the Palladium? <laughs>